top of the day. This is Esther Davis. How are you? I hope you're all doing just marvelously well for a Saturday night. And a Friday night, excuse me, tomorrow is Saturday. <laughs> I know that we are, we're going to open with the State Fair of Texas. Um, it is here next weekend. And everybody I know is prepared for the game. Um, I do need to warn you, I did not bring my press release. The game is wonderful. I'm talking about the uh, Prairie View Grambling game. Highlight, one of the highlights of the State Fair. A couple of new security rules this year. We want you totally cognizant of what they are. Look them up on the website, please, before you get to the fairgrounds. That is extremely important. Uh, we're still celebrating the life and legacy of the great John E. Beckwick, Jr., who was the founder of Golden Gate Funeral Home. I have written several articles about him uh, this week, so it's ironic that the, uh, he passes away and is one of the icons of Texas, along with the Queen of England, Elizabeth Number 2. But we are starting to finish the conversation we had earlier this week. Uh, we got started, on, we ran out of time, which we always do, we always run out of time. But we want to finish that conversation, because I know you're waiting for Bishop to get started. We have Dr. Sam, and who is this lovely lady? My name is Christelle. Christelle. Yeah. Hello, Christelle. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're delighted to have, we're delighted to have <laughs> you here. Uh, I mean, what, why the reason you come, came? You just decided there needed to be a, a lovely lady on the show with these gentlemen? I guess it was meant to be. It yes. wasn't planned, but it happened. Those so are the best kind. it was kind. meant to be. <laughs> Those are the best kind. So I feel pretty blessed. We're talking to the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. You're totally familiar with this group. Uh, now, we have other people asking about you. Okay. Uh, so, I, I guess at some point, uh, you've met one of the other ladies that's from North Texas. That's Pastor Adrian. Pastor Charles. Pastor Charles. And then the group that just left, so they want to meet. Uh, who They've seen you, of course. So look for our table to become a lot more round, even though it's square, it's oblong at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we're going to grow mm -hmm. with this religion mm -hmm. and the uh, religion and spirituality, and Jesus is love. Now, where were we from last week? We're not going to run out of time this time. No, we're not going to run out of time. You know, last time wow. we were talking about, I told you something that happened. Mm -hmm. That the place they call Middle East is actually part of Africa. Well, let me start formally. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know, that part of Africa has got everything to do with God, the whole of Africa. Yes. Let me quote from Leader Olumba Olumba Obu in his teaching. Please. In the everlasting gospel, he called it Africa's ideology. He said, The inhabitants of the whole world are born eloquent testimony that the Holy Spirit has entered Africa. It is a truism that the Holy Spirit has entered Africa. It is surprising that the Africans have not realized mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit has now entered their continent. The other world are where I can tell you for that for sure. Mm -hmm. And if I mm -hmm. met people mm -hmm. in Asia who confirmed it, and even here in the Americas. So if you observe the ways of the life in the world, there is no people who express their love as the African. No people who are as foolish as the African. Foolish. F-O-O-L-I-S-H. Yes, I'm quoting the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm quoting him directly because he is the, the human creator. He mm -hmm. understands the mindset of everybody. He said, none in the world is as humble as the African. Mm -hmm. Neither are there people who are as honest and truthful as the Africans. Mm -hmm. so, however, the trouble with the Africans is their tendency to worship strange gods. Are the Africans not civilized and enlightened enough to have their own ideology and to worship the true God who is love, truth, and brotherhood so that all things may remain in perfect peace and tranquility and also in order to get the whites socialized in the worship and in the African ideology because that's the root ideology of humanity. I guess I don't like some of the verbiage, but you seem to be okay with it. Yes. But that is not true at all. I've studied Africa since I was in the first grade. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
But you know, it takes a lot of wisdom to play the fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. Yeah, because you know, in the African consciousness, they have the spirit of giving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, like Robert Nelson Mali said, said the world don't like to appreciate good people. They like to use them. So the yes. African tendency to have that openness of heart, to love, to welcome everybody into their midst as yes. a family had been so thoroughly abused. But then it doesn't change anything because it can only fool some of the people some of the time, but it cannot fool all the people all the time. But she's so very today, kind. None of that is true. I, that, none of that is true. And uh, I guess maybe your religion allows you to be so very peaceful, but then... You, you know, you have other people that want to say, can we get a recant of that? Can you redo that? Because we do have equal opportunity in this country. Mm -hmm. So if you write something, I have the opportunity to write the same thing. Yes. As a rebuttal, mm -hmm. as against it, it's mm -hmm. called equal time. Yes. And mm -hmm. doing this, <laughs> it's doing the civil rights movement. That's part of the reason we got so much attention in the media. Yes. Because if... A correspondent from New York wrote an article. Well, we had five universities in Atlanta. We would get together and write an article. Mm -hmm. So is it your faith that makes you so peaceful and pleasant and, uh, let's say, non-combative? Well, you see, the founder of the faith for humanity, mm -hmm. Christ, what did he teach us? One. Said it doesn't mean you're weak if you turn the other cheek. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, it does because it does most of the people that react, even in schools, mm -hmm. the bullies are the cowards, the weak minded. Yes. The ones who are principled and disciplined. When the other person is coming, like from the teachings of leader Olumba Olumba Ubu, mm -hmm. when the person is coming with his aggression, you look at him, put him on the scale. What <laughs> demons are pursuing him? Like what are that. the like <laughs> what are, put him on a scale. On a scale. Yeah, what demons are pursuing yes. him? What are the mm. problems that he's facing? Why is he so aggressive? Why does he want to increase his blood pressure? Because peace <laughs> begins with you. Yeah, okay. You have to yeah. internalize the peace before you can externalize it. And leader Olumba Olumba Obu, as Christ said, he came to teach us the capacity to internalize peace so that nothing will disturb your equilibrium. No matter how the wind blows, you're cool and easy, and it can flow with cool. everybody. Yes, cool. exactly. And I, <laughs> I, to add to what the Archbishop is saying, um, and also what our Father Leader Olumbo Numbobu teaches, when you're, because the Bible in and of itself, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, says that you have to be a fool in order to be wise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Because even in foolishness, there is wisdom. If that makes any sense. It does. Yes. It makes, so, it and, and it says it right here, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Mm -hmm. You see? And let's hope so. it doesn't take him very long to get <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> you agree with me, but you have some people that remain yes, on that side true. of the aisle as long yes. as they really should. I'm yes, being as polite as I possibly can. <laughs> but I, I do under the, the wisdom, and I go back mm -hmm. to that conference that you talked about two or three months ago, about how all of this stuff we keep on the inside of us mm -hmm. makes us act foolish yes now if you are a calm delicate person and you start loving and being kinder you become a better person yes yes but you know the world needs it so desperately look at all the problem we're having in the world it's just boys playing with toys <laughs> yeah all the world we're having just boys with playing with toys Oh, the, you know, when they go to the, since they buy their children a more truck, they press the button, oh, boy. <laughs> then in real life, man, when they face the toys, man, the toy now is in the real life. Mm -hmm. And I can put it in the real theater. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mm -hmm. can do some damage. But you see, the life of cowards. All the nations that prosecute this brutality against other people, they do everything possible to make sure the violence does not come to their doorsteps. <laughs> well, um, you, you bring up a very good point because fair housing 
you know, I've been in the legal world for a lot of years. Fair mm -hmm. housing was our biggest issue in this country, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not civil rights, not the integration of schools. They did not want us in their neighborhoods. And they fought endlessly to this day. But now, God has placed us in a place where we can buy a house in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's literally nothing you can do about that, but move if you choose to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've had this progress, but you're right, now we're becoming evil with this progress. Bishop? Yes, because one, in the name of progress, even the best government the world put for themselves. Forgive me for saying so. Mm -hmm. What is democracy? Mm -hmm. Government of the people, right. by the people, for the people, minus God. That's right. That's true. That's true. So when God is not there, mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 1 told us that the preaching of the word of God is foolishness to them that perish. Mm -hmm. So being foolishness, what does it translate? The ability to tolerate is regarded as weakness. The ability to forgive is regarded as weakness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People believe everywhere you see on the billboard, on ad, you're going through Facebook, you have a, somebody broke your leg, sue him, mm -hmm. the lawyer, they're offering you everything free. At the end of the day, when we win, we share. So we kill and divide on the altar of hatred. Mm -hmm. Love teaches you to accommodate. Love teaches you to forgive. Love teaches you to tolerate. And the key thing in this life today, no matter how much money people make, mm. I'll give you something that I saw on Monday, very peculiar. In the Windsor Chapel, when they were entering the Queen, mm -hmm. about to bury her, they did one peculiar thing that looked so strange. They removed the orb, which is a symbol of the British monarchy. They removed the scepter, which is a symbol of the British uh, how do I, imperial dynasty and they removed the crown which made her the queen and the, the Lord Chamberlain of England broke his staff which bound him in duty to the queen and the priest said something very peculiar he said we have to remove this thing so that our sister Elizabeth can go back home to rest in peace no longer queen but our sister all the 70 years Yes. All the vanity, the Kohino diamond that is in the crown, that is worth millions of pounds, yes. all the jewelry taken from all over the world, the pomp, the pageantry, the platinum, the diamond, the gold that decorated the 750 bedroom Buckingham Palace, the 1000 bedroom Balmoral Castle, everything she's going, nothing as Sister Elizabeth. So yeah. life is all vanity. The only thing you take mm -hmm. is the love you give. How many good letters of hope do you write in the heart of men? Right. Mm -hmm. That's what Lido Lumbo Lumbo Boo came to teach us. Yeah. And that's why when you look at all things, it's an illusion. It is here today, gone tomorrow. Yes. They call <laughs> it in the ancient Sanskrit word <laughs> Maya, M A Y A. Mm -hmm. In that Maya, you're holding it. You wake up, the question is, where did the night go? Where are all the things I was holding? But in the brotherhood of life, we realize that there's a greater life ahead of this. Mm -hmm. And that's why Christ yeah. said, what shall it profit a man if he will gain the whole world and, and lose, lose his soul? soul? Exactly. Christelle, right? Did I say that right? You said it right. Okay, this is a talking show. Mm -hmm. So we all chime in. Yeah. I ask the ridiculous questions. <laughs> they bring me back to life here. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I live in this world of, of great sins and things that uh, I took a whole class in diplomacy and protocol um, years ago. We had 17 ambassadors that came in to the United States. They came to Dallas. And we had a mayor here at the time that invited them. That was our Honorable Mayor Ron Kirk, because at the time we wanted agreements with uh, certain countries in Africa. So we had protocol. Now, when they left, we didn't no longer have that. <laughs> what does that tell you? So, uh, you know, if you have a comment, I've got to hear from you. Sam is really deep. I'm talking about Dr. Sam. <laughs> I know you are training him, and he's doing a powerful, powerful job. Thank you. But thank you for bringing up the funeral, because those of us outside of that fold or that circle did not understand that breaking of the baton yes mm -hmm. and we didn't know what it meant yes mm -hmm. it was the 
covenant, and that is the symbol of office, mm. because the Lord mm. Chamberlain the of, of the Lord Chamberlain of England, which is the highest staff the Queen has. Now, breaking it means that whatever held them mm. as an obligation from him to the Queen is gone because she has finished her work. Okay. Now, he, whoever is going to be the Lord Chamberlain, will now renew his own again with King Charles the Third. Okay. That is to tell us that life is ephemeral. If Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. chapter 3 says there is a time for everything under the sun, a time to live and a time to die, a time to keep and a time to throw away that which is kept. But all of us are heading to a destination, you know? Yeah, we are. And it is that we destination. Are. That's why Christ said in John 14 verse 2 that if in my father's house are many mansions, mm -hmm. he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare that place, I will come again and receive you to myself, so that wherever I am, there you may be also. And humanity has been looking at that home to be somewhere in the sky, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where Christ will come and they will just become birds and rockets. And, <laughs> <laughs> and there is a time to be foolish and a time to be wise. Yes. 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 The traditionalist plays with patience, actually. Mm -hmm. With patience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. You being foolish doesn't mean you cannot be wise. It's easier okay. to be foolish <laughs> and grow into wisdom than to be wise and grow and become foolish. That's okay. harder. It's like in the Bible, I don't know which Bible of, uh, portion of the Bible, it says it is harder for a, ma a rich man to pass, uh, it's as hard as a camel to pass through the eye of a needle mm -hmm. for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God mm -hmm. because it's hard to go like this, but to grow, to grow, that is natural. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key is, is growing. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, from just like you do from a, a, an infant <coughs> to the fifth grade or to the first grade, it's, yes. it's growing. Yes. And the, uh, just the life that, you know, God, I had a birthday this week. Oh, I need to say something about that. Thank you all for the birthday. It's still going on. Whose birthday? Yes, whose my birthday? birthday. It was my oh, birthday. Hey, wow. Doc, you oh, yeah. it's okay. Oh, well, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Then they will ask the woman. <laughs> they will ask the woman, "Are you sure you're living with a man? Are you sure that man at home is functional?" Yeah. All because they did not, and they did not ask themselves question. What is causing the problem in the world today? One simple thing: impatience. Mm -hmm. God told Abraham, oh. "I will give you a child yes. at my time." Sarah got up, said, "Hey, Abraham." I think you're not thinking about this situation because I know you're having something somewhere you don't want to let me know. <laughs> oh yeah, go to my maid. Ah. When the maid conceived again, the same wife said, hey, because she has conceived now, she doesn't want to respect me, drive her from the house. You can imagine the predicament of Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. Now I cannot imagine the, the predicate of, it, of Abraham. But you know, it's this, this whole thing of life and uh, and birth, it gives you a, a sense of great deep appreciation. Yes, and that's why I'm so against abortion because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know mm -hmm. what that child is going, going to, to be. be. Mm -hmm. yes. Presidents, nurses, mm -hmm. pilots. Mm -hmm. um, and I have two questions we want to put on the table today. One is voting. Okay. We, voting. Mm -hmm. We have a voting season coming up, so. Get your scriptures ready for how, why should we vote? Why should we care about where we are? How do we support the land that God has put us on? Mm -hmm. uh, I realize we have a democracy. And then the, uh, uh, the one we were talking about mm -hmm. last week. Yes. About the issue of the Suez Canal. Exactly. Because historians, geographers, everybody knew it. The only reason why they had to carve out Northeast Africa and call it Middle East was simply the fact that they needed a passage for their vessels bearing spices, silk, jute, okay. and other produce from the East, from okay. China, from India, Japan, and that Eastern world. And instead of taking this southern route to the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, mm -hmm. that is always turbulent, so why did they just divide the place and create a waterway? Remember some time last year, a big ocean-going vessel from a uh, cargo ship from Ch Japan got stuck yes, in the mud. Yes, because of the low water. In the low water. Because the Suez Canal is not a natural waterway. It was mm -hmm. artificial waterway. Wait a minute. The Suez Canal the is Suez, not a natural waterway. It was artificially created. I'm speaking it before the public media. People who are geographers and researchers yes, can yes, look, look yes, into it. Was, it was artificial waterway to create so that the merchant vessels from the east can pass through there and enter the Atlantic to come to the West and bring their goods. So, and yes, in doing the that, ocean, I mean. yes, in doing that, what did they do now? They derived Africa of a big chunk mm -hmm. of her land. Because if you look at the geographical configuration, eh, far east, China, Japan, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, and so on, are up there. Southeast, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Burma, and so on, Thailand are in the middle. How come Middle East is at the tartan tip when the Southeast is in the middle? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> How far back, what century are you talking about when this was done? Are we talking... It's something less than 200 years two, ago. Less than 200 years Yes, ago. it was done by the ruling powers, the British yes. system, because yes. then their kingdom had a kingdom the sun never sets. From Asia to Australia to South America, Central America, the Caribbean, North America, USA, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they need their goods to come. In the global power play, it's not a problem. It's normal. The winner takes all. But so then, <laughs> <laughs> but in the divine system, no matter how they do it, because if you look at that geographical abuse, you realize that Eden is in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. in the cycle of human journey through time, for God to return back again to reestablish the new order of righteousness, he must come from Africa. That's why this time he did not come from the eastern side of Africa. We are expecting the Eden to be. He went to the other side of Africa, to the west coast, to pitch his tent. Because he said, out of Africa shall rise the glory. From the, beyond the borders of Ethiopia shall my beloved bring my offering according mm -hmm. to Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. So what is fulfilling today, the advent of leader Olumba Olumba Obu in Africa is to bring the new spiritual civilization for mm -hmm. humanity. Mm 
Yes. The new spirit civilization. spiritual civilization. civilization. Yes. And Doc, if I may explain it, there are only three civilizations that God has brought on earth. Okay. Forget about this one. They say the Mayan, the Incan, the Egyptian, the Aztec, the Indian, or Chinese. No. The first civilization was in Eden. Okay. When God set up the order of existence Sorry, and put well, man yeah. as the administrator of the divine estate. Mm -hmm. The second civilization was the advent of the man from Nazareth called Jesus, Yeshua, okay. who brought in Christ, Jesus, the son of Mary, who manifested Christ to, to humanity. Okay. Now, the last civilization is the one now leader Olumba Olumba Obu has brought, and he called it Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Why the Brotherhood? All of us are Brotherhood. What is the cross? Our ability to tolerate each other, nothing more forgive tolerate because the greatest power in existence is forgiveness then when there's that forgiveness there's harmony there's love pains are gone the joy comes in the glory of god which is the star mm -hmm. and christ said he that overcome it i will give him the morning star wow the morning star yes mm -hmm. and christ is that morning star so in this last spiritual civilization of love where he came to teach us the way to live together through forgiveness, cohabitation, coexistence, and love. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then when we come, we break the barriers of race, tribe, yes. caste, color, and creed, class. language, mm -hmm. and class. so on and yes. so forth. Yes. And we then develop one, one race and one class, the human race and the class of humanity, ruled by wow. love and God you know, at the end. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I have to do is <laughs> and <not> <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, this is a this is the funniest show where we laugh so much. Uh, my the lady that called me this week, I uh, did tell you I was gonna call your name. And she said, y'all have so much fun on that show. Leave me in, I'll be listening to y'all. <laughs> and I, I thought, well, you're so absolutely right. I hadn't thought of that. But because we are listening to something that just stirs your spirit, I think that is one of the things. And you have taught so much love and togetherness. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, we've had some of the greatest shows that we could ever possibly have. So you're gonna have to come back um, to, to share all of this with us. Because as a nation of people here in the United States, we have got to do better. Hmm. Uh, we just gotta do better. And we appreciate all of the spreading of that gospel. And to be honest with you, Africa is still mysterious to people. It is, it is, it's, it's a huge mystery. It's 54 it's countries. Mystery. Yes, it is. It's it's a very huge mystery. And, and we have um, a lot of misinformation. You guys are not yes. Tarzan anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from the country. Yes. Yeah, because yes. we still have that mentality, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. You know, the challenge I'll put to my brothers of the African descent, eh? say, do not listen to what they tell you. Because life is business. Mm -hmm. I came from a culture of business, the Igbos. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. My people will bring this and tell you, hey, this is the best in the market. Yours could be better quality. It's not my concern. My mm -hmm. concern is my deal must go first. I can rubbish your product to the point that nobody will look at your stock. I'll sell my own and buy your own at my price and make my profit on your head. That is what is <laughs> happening in the world. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so the African children in this part of the world, when the producers come, the film producers, Universal Studios, MGM, and so on, uh -huh. they only come to Africa, for instance, in Lagos. They don't go to the choice areas where decent human beings live. That really? can come. Yes. They go to the slums and the ghettos well, to yeah. pick so that when they come, they want to show the Africa where they saw a small boy dying of starvation <laughs> yes. and the vulture was waiting on the side to eat the body. And then the fair lady came and picked up the child and not sure that say see i picked him from the slums the ghettos the dregs of africa mm -hmm. and now i've made him human as if african is a continent of monsters even some people don't even know that africa has 54 countries mm. it's true and nigeria alone has 400 distinct languages between three to 400 distinct and you languages have 180 million people just in nigeria alone and mm -hmm. dynamic yeah, just people in nigeria. yes, yes. Uh, is it, there a census report on all of the the countries in 
A census. We, we do the census here in the United States every 10 years. Yes. What, they do? Yes, census. They do. Yeah, please go ahead. Mm-hmm. They, do, they do census, but okay. there's so many. We are so many. We're like Cameroon is what, 2 million. I mean, we two are a lot. And 200 inhabitants. And we have like, what, 200 di- local dialect as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So it's a lot. And, and we manage to be together. You, and man, to you manage to. Be, you know what? That is and a very paramount yeah. issue. You but, do manage to. But be if together. I tell mm-hmm. you one mystery, leader Olumba Olumba Obu said the moment the world did mm-hmm. the first census in Israel, they mm-hmm. offended God. And I think somewhere in the Bible, I can locate it now. The first census called in Israel, God took a terrible offense and dealt with the nation of Israel, yes, because King census. David. Yes, yes, King mm-hmm. David. Mm-hmm. Census creates division. Why? Because he said, wherever you are, even if you're a billion people, you're just one person. Philippians 4, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 4 to 6. Mm-hmm. Okay. We are one spirit, one body, one soul, one God, one Father. Mm-hmm. The difference is that in each of us, an aspect of God is invested. Mm-hmm. An aspect of God is invested. Is invested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now when we harness that investment... Because all these senses, let me be sincere. Forgive me, Americans. Oh, you would. You're not going to change now. <laughs> <laughs> you're you know, this big quiet game. You know, <laughs> you know what I wanted to say? We don't want you to be silent if, now. If you, look at the, if you look at the senses they want to do now, they want to do how many are Hispanics? How many are Puerto Ricans? Yes. How many are African Americans? How many are European Americans? Which people in the demography are higher in concentration than the other? It is not done for the common good, but just a grandstanding for certain people to feel in their comfort zone we are not challenged. Mm -hmm. But if they see that we are one family, it doesn't matter whether people that look like me are only 10 and people that look like her are 1 million and people that look like him are 1 billion. It doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. We are one people. Mm -hmm. And that is the brotherhood of life. And that is the message of hope. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Leader Olumba Olumba Obu said we should bring to the Americans. They should forget their differences and celebrate their similarities mm-hmm. as a family of love. Yes. yes. Well, I think um, the the scripture we respect Africa because of your education. I mean, I think I read some place where the average African has three degrees. The average, and they speak thirty twelve. 12 to 13 languages. Every, Americans has one language. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have had shows on that because we, <laughs> we tend to think that in our, we're in Texas, so they tend to think that the Latino Spanish is the number one rural language. That is not true. Mm-hmm. Is, Arab, is it Arabic or is it um, uh, the, um, the other religion? There's two large religions. The, the Arabic, and and the Islam, Islam, the Hindu. Yes, yeah, the Hindu. So the which, Hindu. which is the largest language, you think? Mm, Population-wise, Hindus are the largest in the world. Okay. They are close to 1.3 um, billion. But then the Chinese supersede Arabic. the Indians yeah. in population. Is Arabic? Arabic is in the Arabian Peninsula. Saudi Arabia is a small country, less than 200 million people or thereabouts. Small yeah. country. It's, it's, not, it's not big. India and pa- even Saudi Arabia is about one-fifth in population of India, even in land size. Only thing, they have massive hydrocarbon deposits. Mm-hmm. And it's the center of Islam. The, grand, the Mecca is in Saudi Arabia. The Medina is in Saudi Arabia. The Mina, where they go to stone the devil, it's also in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> and ah. all the Muslim faithful all over the world, according to the teachings of Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, say that every faithful Muslim must go at least once to Hajj in Mecca. So that's a very smart economic sense because it boosts the economy so mm. much. Every mm. year, the lesser Hajj, the bigger Hajj, like Pakistan, that is uh, almost 100%, 97% Muslim, mm-hmm. close to 10 million people go to Hajj a year. Indonesia and so many other countries like that. So financially, they attract a lot of resources. But if you come of massive language size, India, China, between the two of them, they, they've taken almost, almost one third or more of the global population between India and China, they have close to three billion people on Earth. Well, if including going through those senses will help us include each other more, 
it will make sense. It will be something valuable. <coughs> but the more we make senses, the more we divide it. Mm -hmm. So what is the point? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the point of the goal of Brother of the Cross and Star is to say, hey, no matter where you're coming from, no matter how different you are, no matter the language you speak, you can love each other. You can yes, live you with can it together. Can you love, can, can be. Yes. Yeah, yes. you can on, enjoy each other, which is the yeah. cross. Because you can, we can be all brotherhood, but if we cannot bear each other, there is no, we cannot live in peace. Well, there's your civil war. Mm, peace does not mean absence of war. When we misbehave, we fight. There's a song that they sang in Brotherhood before Sam would say something, eh? He said, we were blinded because of sin. <laughs> we turned from love to hatred. Now our nakedness is exposed. We've seen the light of God. You understand the song? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We were blinded because of sin. What is sin? Missing the mark. Mm -hmm. We turned from love to hatred. A dupe is foolish. The person that general in the war front is among the most foolish people. The priest that goes to pray for opposing sides, mm -hmm. like the war going on between Ukraine and Russia today. The Orthodox uh -huh. priest in Russia will stand on this side, bless Russian soldiers. The Orthodox priest in Ukraine will stand on the other side, bless Ukraine, Ukraine soldiers to go and kill their brothers. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is, when a leader is demented, Yes. Instead yes. of them recognizing that he has psychiatric challenge and treat, and treat him, mm -hmm. they visit his weakness on the general populace. Like when Nero was ruling Rome as a Caesar, mm -hmm. and he was busy playing his violin and entertaining himself while Rome was burning in fire because he was a man in power. <laughs> <laughs> it is the foolishness of foolishness of man. Go to Yemen today; they are killing innocent people are starving. Iran, Iraq, all the places. What is the result of the war we generate? Nothing. 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 But peace. Nothing. Like Nothing. remember I told you when I, I saw it and I was laughing. I said men build a hundred thousand dollar bomb. Remember? Mm -hmm. yes. Put it in a hundred million dollar aircraft. Mm -hmm. Put for the five thousand dollar aviation gasoline into the tank <laughs> for the pilot to go and bomb people who are living less than two dollars a day. Income. <laughs> I remember <laughs> being here at the time. I had to repeat it. And I thought, I didn't get all of that. <laughs> but that is absolutely true. Yes. Yes, but then going. God would sometimes show up mm -hmm. and show out and mm -hmm. make us feel like, okay, he's still on power. He's still in power. Mm -hmm. This is still his earth. And I will not have this. Mm -hmm. Yes, and going along with what the Archbishop and uh, D.V. Christel were saying, um, because the Father said it, the Holy Father, our Father Lido Olumbo Olumbobu, said it in one of his Gospels. And he said that there can never be peace without war. Yeah. Because the same way that it began mm -hmm. is the same way that it must end. All things began inside of Africa, therefore all things must end inside of yeah, Africa. Yeah. Africa is the root of the tree. Yeah. No matter how far the branches yeah. of that tree go, they must be dependent upon the root, which is Africa. Even wow. today, you know, uh, every civilization comes from Africa. All of the natural resources come that's from Africa. Africa. You know, that's why China is interested in uh, Africa. Mm -hmm. That's why the Western world is interested, the European world, the Asian world, everyone is interested in Africa. Mm -hmm. And not only for their resources, but also for their wisdom. Well, you got all of that history over there, too. Yes, the United exactly. States doesn't have, we're only, what, 245 years old. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But when you go overseas, you see statues that are three times that mm -hmm. age. Yes, because everyone goes to Egypt to learn. Yes. They go and learn because they don't know the mystery. Yeah. They don't know the mystery in Africa. They don't know the wisdom behind mm -hmm. how they mm -hmm. built the pyramids, even uh -huh. south of, That's of still Egypt. That's a mystery. Why yes. is that a mystery? Why is that a mystery? After all of these years, after thousands and thousands of years, mm -hmm. she acts like she's got the question. <laughs> 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 you have to wonder about just the grace of God, the hugeness of God. And you're going to mm -hmm. build a pyramid? Mm 
Well, you mm -hmm. see, if you look at it, Doc, eh? Genesis 1, 49. Jacob, while blessing his children, 49 verse, 41, 49 verse 10, sorry, Genesis 49 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While Jacob was blessing his children, he made a very peculiar statement. Addressing the royal house of Judah, which is the ruling house of Israel, he made a statement in verse 10. He said, the scepter, which is a symbol of power, kingly mm -hmm. throne, mm -hmm. shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him that shall the gathering of the people be. Why is it so? Hmm. Jacob was the second son. Remember, the first son is more or less like a, a, first, a father to the house. He is trained in house management, emotional management, mental management, resource management of the family. Most of the time, the father equips him to take over after him. Yes. yes. Now, even when Jacob was blessing the two sons of Jacob, of him, Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh was the first son, but Jacob placed the right hand on the head of Ephraim and the left on Manasseh because he knew he has no right to confer that right. Mm -hmm. And he knew there's going to be a time when the glory must leave the house of Israel. And how did it start? When it started from Joab, the general of uh, David, mm -hmm. who persecuted the Edomites until Hadad and a few others went to Egypt. And it is still playing out till today. Sudan, where the Pharaoh still kept that till today in Sudan, mm -hmm. where the Pharaoh kept the, 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 the Edomites, mm -hmm. the place was called Sudan, the abode of the black man. Mm -hmm. From there, they moved them, the Arabians came and pursued them from northern Sudan to southern Sudan. It was a couple of years ago. The resources of Sudan are in southern Sudan, and they are Africans. The northern Sudan are Arabians. And it's from that Sudan, the Edomites, who make up the Africa started moving to different parts. If you go across Africa cultures, the Ashanti, the Bantu, the Kosa, the Zulu, name them Buganda, everyone, they tell you they came from Palestine. So Africa is the firstborn son. So it is a natural right to be able to gather all the families together. And you cannot do that if you don't choose to be foolish mm -hmm. because you must ignore your brother's differences. True. And that's your job because you have this marvelous title in the United States. You, the uh, Archbishop Emmanuel came and told us how powerful he was and who he was. Mm. Um, that you're over a ministry in the entire United States yes. mm -hmm. and beyond. Yes. So you got the best of BCS <laughs> <laughs> on, the show. on the show. And that's what we want. We want only the best because that history is so, is so important. Mm. Um, Let's talk about voting. Do you vote? Vote? What do you think about the vote? Well, why we vote? Because said, if you keep quiet, you become subject, I mean, responsible for what happens. You must still speak your voice. You know, praying that God, because it's only God that gives leaders. Yes. And a nation gets what they deserve. But you know the problem humanity has? Sam, please, let me trouble you. Read Matthew <laughs> chapter 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Matthew chapter, Matthew five. chapter 5. I Matthew think. 5. We've done that one before. Yes, there's something he's going to tell you. I think from verse 36 or 35 down to 38. Okay. It talks something about those who come into the office. Please, Sam, check it out. Okay. Okay. So verse... From verse 35. Verse 35. Yeah. Okay, so Matthew go, 5, 35. From verse 35 down. Go down a bit. Okay. From there. It says, nor by the earth, for okay, it is... Okay, start from verse 34, yes. 34, okay. Uh, but from, I, mm, from verse 33 to 36, go ahead. Okay. Again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven for it is god's throne nor by the earth for it is his footstool neither by jerusalem for it is the city of the great king neither shalt thou swear by thy head because thou canst not make one hair white or black and go 37 also to complete it but let your communication be ye communication ye be. nay nay for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil now what do we do with our democracy and the governance 
an innocent man is brought in the office. Instead of allowing him to do the work, they bring a book. Are you a Christian or a Muslim? Yes, I'm a Christian. Okay. You take the Bible that told you not to swear at all and say swear. Yeah. When you swear, say whatever comes out of oath taking is of evil. So that moment you've removed the man and his good intentions and if imputed evil in him. Okay. Taking oath of office is the undoing of human administrations. One of the, people, the, undoing. the undoing of the human administration and human yeah. administrative okay. system. Mm -hmm. Because once the man had been selected by their people to lead them, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all he need to do is inaugurate him or shine him into the office. Don't cause him to swear against God. And he said, you're a Christian nation and you're violating the law of God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Don't have him swearing against the law of God. Yes. Exactly. And I believe uh, oh because with, yeah, with, even with voting. Voting is, you know, democracy is something that, you know, is more of a European uh, political system. Uh, they have their own parliament, at least the British do. Um, but the original governments were monarchies and they were ordained by God and that is you know uh, it, it's more or less like a reinstitution of such you know in this world today because now they've done away with all monarchies and now they put in democracy yes, in order the, to free the, yes. the people you know so uh, w with voting it is good because we are to abide by the laws of the land but the law of God supersedes every other law that came up at Queen Elizabeth's funeral. One of the correspondents brought it up. Mm -hmm. Will the monarchies continue? Well, I think Charles III is now on the throne. But, you know, as he used to be, with her passage, the world must acknowledge mm -hmm. a generation has faced out. The generation has faced out. Remy, how much time do we have? Oh. oh, gosh, this is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Time can fly. <laughs> when you're involved and then you're hanging on to every word. You know, like, the time is four minutes. We haven't been talking that long. <laughs> what I think is this. I was saying something talking about monarchy and democracy, but what are democracy of monarchy? At the end of the day, we is the expression, like democracy is the expression of people's mind, what they want, who they want, and the, the plan that they think is best for them. Mm -hmm. And once they express it, it should be honored. What is the point of the swearing? Are we doubting that they made a clear decision? You're questioning it. Mm -hmm. yes. So what you're well, basically saying is that... I want the people have made their choice, governor, senator, Whatever. president, mm -hmm. usher them into their office, celebrate the victory, give him the support. No, they're putting him to swear and become an enemy of God because the mind is the master. Mm -hmm. And whichever spirit you're allowed to rule your head controls you. Once that force is admitted, I'll give you 1999. One president was being sworn into Africa. As soon as he swore an oath, I was, my eye was opened. I saw an image. Mm. looking as if they used coal to mold it, opened the body of that man and walked into him. Mm -hmm. And that nation saw hell under his regime. Mm -hmm. Because the real man that the people voted for had been sworn out that. of the man. Mm. It's not an evil brooding force that they bring in. That's why a good man getting into that office people get surprised. Hey, this is not the man we voted for. That's not the one we campaigned for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that is a, why... Maybe it's ego. No, no, Doc, it's not ego. You know, that is why the Holy Father has brought down the kingdom where there's only one monarchy, the Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's true. And mm -hmm. that monarch, the Christ, came with to rule with love. And that is why in his government there's no swearing, but he said, leave your word, let your word be your bond. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you this cup by 6 a.m. If I cannot do it by 6 a.m., I owe you the courtesy to call, hey, doc, sorry, I'll be late by 30 minutes. And at 6.30, I bring it. Say, let your yes be yes. Mm -hmm. And your no 
be no. no you don't need to be sworn into an oath <laughs> or a bond to accomplish it no. because anything other than that comes from evil mm. and that is the message of brotherhood to humanity not just to america let your word be true word love your be. brother and sister and remember we are one yeah. even if we might be many colors and different languages and different nationalities and there is one god yes. one spirit and he is bishop archbishop joseph Gosh, we are, we always run out of time. Always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. But it is wonderful all at the same time. I want to thank you so much for coming. We really, thank really you. appreciate you. I love thank this you. group. Uh, so much has been done. Yes. And so much will continue to be done. Yes. We have some new listeners tonight. Uh, I will mention some of their names. Lee Barnes, who actually called. I hope you, I know you're on. He's watched all of the shows. And uh, he's going to come into the studio. He is working on an embassy in Houston, Texas. So we've got lots of visitors. So thank you so much. We always appreciate you. And by the way, by the way, let's just be good to each other. Thanks for watching yesterday's <laughs> show. Wow. Yes, I do. You have a lot of fun. I should be coming more often. <laughs>